what's up, it's Nate with GME Supply and today I'm gonna to walk you through the basics of how to tether your tools using the four most common methods, shackles, hand tool slips, tape traps, and cold shrink traps. Before beginning any method of tool tethering, it is important to know the weight and diameter of the tools you're tethering in order to determine the correct height and size of tether you will need. We are going to start with tool shackles. For this type of tethering, you will need screwdriver, thread adhesive, and the correct size shackle. To start, unscrew the shackle crossbar and set it aside. Next, slide the U-shackle around the waist or neck of the tool depending on the type. Apply thread adhesive to the threads on the crossbar and screw it back into the U-shackle. Allow time for the adhesive to dry and then test to make sure the shackle won't slide off either end. Once tested, you can attach your preferred tether and you are ready to climb. The second tool tethering method is hand tool slips. These are simple, quick tethers and are mainly used for hand tools like hex keys and screwdrivers. To use a hand tool slip, simply push your hand tool through the star membrane of the slip. If your tool is blunt ended, you may need to pierce the membrane with a sharp tool first. Once through the membrane, slide the tool as far onto the membrane as possible. Check to make sure the membrane isn't sliding up and down the tool. Attach your preferred tool tether and again, you're good to go. The next method of tool tethering is tape traps. For tape trap tool tethering, you will need a heat source with a low setting, a tool tail, and the appropriate length of tape trap. First, remove the plastic film on the tape trap. Next, depending on the tool you are tethering, you will either position the tool tail as far up the handle or grip as possible, or choke the elastic end around the handle of your tool and tighten the barrel lock. After your tool tail is positioned correctly, begin wrapping the tool handle and tool tail just below the web catch point of the tail. Be sure to keep the shiny side of the tool tape up. Make sure to double up the first wrap and then begin working the tape trap up the handle, making sure to stretch the tape trap the entire way, as well as overlapping the previous laps by a minimum of one half inch. If at any point you feel you have wrapped the tape incorrectly, simply unwrap it to that point and rewrap it once there are only 1 to 1.5 inches of tape trap left, position the tape to cover all overlapping layers. Using your heat source on a low setting, heat the last 1 to 1.5 inches of tape trap until the tape begins to curl and soften, approximately 3 to 5 seconds. Stretch the end of the tape trap to rewrap the handle over your existing wraps one more time. Once the end of the tape trap adheres to the tool, heat the entire body of the tape at the same temperature for 5 to 10 seconds. Let the tape cool for two to five minutes before you test the tape. One major benefit of the tool tape is that it can be easily removed by cutting the adhesive and removing it from the tool. It should be noted that anything over 200 degrees can melt the tape and create an unsafe tether. A good rule of thumb to double check your heat source is using your hands. If it is too hot for your hand, it is too hot for the tape. Our fourth most common type of tool tether is the cold shrink trap. Just like the tape trap, you will begin by choking the elastic end of the tool tail onto the handle of your tool and tightening the barrel lock. Here, it is important to double check that the entirety of the shrink wrap will fit on the tool handle and above the choke portion of the tail. Once you have the shrink trap where you want it, begin unwrapping the inner core through itself with a counterclockwise motion. As the shrink trap begins tightening onto the tool, be sure it isn't bunching or sliding on the tool or tool tail. Unspool the entire core. As with all tool tethers, it is important to test this tether out before taking it into the field. Similar to the tool tape, if you need to remove the cold shrink, you can cut it off. And there you have it. How to use the four most common types of tool tethers. Which one do you use most on your job sites? What else would you like us gear experts to break down for you? Let us know in the comments or reach out to us on social media at GME Supply. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.